Grace immediately here. Um, and then Salty Potato will probably pick up the Lyra. And try to again work an early and late game composition against the Grace. And Grace, obviously, uh, Raph more than happy to run with this hero. Able to find a lot of utility out of it in the previous game. So Lyra, of course, it does get picked up. There's Batiste banned away. It's a little interesting because, uh, you know, Tyrus, while he can play a strong Batiste, I don't, it's not really something that he, you know, leans towards. Usually it's the Scar for the Samuel, uh, things of that nature, or even Grump Jaw if the situation calls for it. So Black Feather taken away. They're going to let the yeah, Salty Potatoes gonna, have their Kestrel. Yeah, they're going to pick up, yeah, Kestrel will be picked up here. Um, and then I think SK may opt for Adagio or, oh, wow, Fortress. Fortress. With, well, we said they wanted to go early With game. Scarf. They're going to do the Fortress-Scarf combo that they did before. Or, or Samuel. There we go. Um, this worked. It's a weapon grace. Fortress counters uh, Kestrel because of the wolves. And then Samuel can just rain damage from behind. All right. So we've already seen them go with this one. The weapon grace in lane going into the hands of K. Volifar. Bacon's not a fan, but they managed to get the win with it. So... <laughs> You know, you can't argue with the results at the end of the day. What are Salty Potatoes going to have to go with here to to finish out this composition? Uh, it, it, they need something that's not really directional. They need something that can dive into back lines and get a lot of work done. Because if you go with anything that's directional damage, it's just going to get body blocked up by this grace on the front lines. Uh, you want to have something that can go hard into the Samuel, try and force him out of position. Uh, maybe something like a Glaive would work here for them. It's just you need some kind of crowd control because they really don't have any. The Sky is one that can get onto the back lines, can have a little bit of crowd control. It's going to become very much about that skill matchup, though, as it almost always is with a Sky. Yeah, they're going to pick Sky to counter specifically the carry Grace. So. These are the powerhouses of Europe. They will be looking to put up a great challenge to the Salty Potatoes. This is going to be an interesting game, too, just you know, by virtue of the compositions that we have coming out here, we saw Kavalifar be successful with this lane grace yesterday. But this time around, he's playing lane grace into a Sky. And Sky, although everyone knows, you know, Sky is very good against the Captain Grace, I think will also be very effective against lane grace and just in general weapon grace. So we'll see uh, if that pans out. I also think that of, of the carries you could put against a grace, Kestrel is probably one of the better ones. Grace does not really have any way of moving around an active camo trap safely. So if Sneaky is positioning properly, could make uh, life very difficult for Kavalifar. This all sort of screams to me that SK needs to, for a start, you know, really have a pace-setting attitude in this game. They need to be very aggressive and try and close things out before Salty Potato hits, uh, hits their late-game spikes. But also, I, I think that perhaps... Um, the, the game is going to be largely about you know, whether or not they can abuse soft potatoes indirectly by you know forcing them into awkward situations or positions or bad rotations. Because if you just try and straight up initiate into soft potatoes, you're going to have problems that Kavalfar struggles to solve, and by virtue of that, Tyrus is going to struggle to to capitalize on the space Kavalfar is creating because he won't really be creating space. Fortress pick for Raph makes a lot of sense. It uh, basically reveals where Sneaky is going in the middle of team fight since he can active camo at will. Uh, the Fortress puppies, the attack of the pack, kind of just follows him around. Joker on this sky can slow down perhaps the uh, aggression that comes out of Kavalafar and Raph, but it can't stop it. And, and that's kind of the issue is that SK have drafted this composition that just wants to go full speed ahead. Going to be really just trying to jump as quickly onto the Kestrel and Sky and put as much pressure down. Does look like Soddy Pate is going to secure this central tree, but at what cost? SK won the kills here. The Drifting Dark does expire, but here comes Kavalafar around the side, and that's going to be a kill going over to Tyras, the Joker. I don't think he escapes this, but he's going to make his move, at least attempt it. No, Kavalafar will find the auto attack and the kill. 2-0 to SK. Soddy Pate is falling behind. Yeah, and I think Kvalifar and the rest of SK are pretty happy to make that trade. Kvalifar did have to give up some lane CS, but more, more than worth it, I think. Um, especially if we actually see some additional pressure being followed up with by SK here. You know, it, it was possible that Joker 
could have picked up a kill there, I think. It didn't quite pan out uh, as nicely as he would have liked. But they do get the Trant, so things actually end up fairly close. Now that Kavalafar has picked up the lane wave, you can see the SK did come out net ahead uh, off the back of that fight. You mentioned earlier the fortress making a lot of sense. You kind of saw there, you know, how effective it can be. Did a lot of work for SK in just engaging that fight. Between Raph's fortress and Kavalafar's uh, grace, they do have a lot of ability just to dive in. Gotta be careful about it being cancelled out by the Lyra or avoided by the Kestrel and the Sky. Item-wise, I think that, uh... Oh, hang on. Sneaky. Yes, Sneaky in a bit of trouble. Classed, able to get him out to safety, but look at the Malice of Verdicts that Tyra's uh, outputting. Classed and Sneaky both very low here, and, you know, the Fortress movement speed for his allies when charging towards a target. Uh, when we get into these all-out team fights, uh, AJ will actually just allow Kavalafar to stick to his target so easily. He's going in, they're looking for class, but they're not going to quite commit to a turret dive. Yeah, the Fortress is kind of the glue for this comp, because as I said, I think Kavalafar is really going to have a tough time in a vacuum getting onto the targets and being effective. But with the, the move speed and more treads as well, he should still be able to do things. Uh, plus, we might see him transition towards a more utilitarian build later on. You know, picking up a, an Echo, for example, is something we saw from him previously. If that happens, it's, it's less about whether or not he can stay on a target and more about whether or not he can force them to burn mobility spells so that Tyrus can actually land his abilities afterwards. Right now, lots of damage. Class almost dead here. Tyrus, one more Malice, Ooh. and there it is. Able to find the kill on to Class there. Now Sneaky and the Joker with a hard task of trying to defend this turret. Clearing the wave as quickly as possible, but look at Raf diving in. Joker in trouble as well as SK just split the threat between the two members of Salty Potatoes. They're not going to be able to secure the turret off this push, but Raf has made his way to the shop to buy a fountain, and Clast isn't going to have one available. So there is kind of a chance to turret dive here if they wanted to. They have that regen that can come through. Yeah, it's definitely possible. I think that right now SK's bet, though, is to try and just invade the jungle and slow down Joker. Um, taking a turret is a little risky. You never know what's going to happen. Joker's now level 6. Death from above can really shut down that kind of play. Whereas if you just try and steal away jungle camps, you're forcing Salted Potatoes to fight you in a position where they don't have backup from a turret. And I do think that in a straight-up fight, at least for now, SK has a noticeable advantage. It's going to be even bigger once Kavalafar hits 6, which he's about halfway to. Start uh, shoving this wave up, trying to hit that point ASAP, so they can actually make those group rotations. It's a tough start for the Salted Potatoes. They are really just finding themselves the... Uh... The victims of the aggression from SK so far. The Joker finishes his Frostburn. Tyrus is considerably ahead uh, already in his build. Going to be looking to try and finish that Frost, uh, that Broken Myth before the Joker. Joker may even be forced to go even Harvest. We'll be interested to see what happens. Consistently just stealing away this front treant away from Joker. Just puts uh, Soy Potatoes a little bit behind every single time. Class face checking a bush. Oh, the Oblivion just sidestepped. The class now has to escape these malice and verdicts and look at the damage he can put out. It's just insane from Tyra's. Oh no! <laughs> what? That was a benediction what? onto Sneaky! What? And the retribution! The AoE what? found the auto attack. Oh that is that is hard to eat right there. Hard to swallow. Damn, that was brutal. <laughs> oh man, benediction is a good ability, Yalsi. It's a good that ability. So much work. Oh, what is that? that is insane, sneaky. Can he escape, Joker? Can he escape? Some real questions being asked here. Class comes through with a fountain to try and keep salty potatoes in this one. SK though, they are very happy to just walk away from this. Kavalafar is just looking for the next benediction. With that tension bow, it just does so much burst. He has Sorrow Blade ready to go as soon as he makes it to a shop. Finishes it off. See that minion candy coming down. Class in a bit of trouble. Tyra is looking for the kill. Can't quite get in range, but finally for SK, they've done enough work to secure themselves a turret and a 2,000 god lead. You know, my point earlier about just pressuring the jungle is invalidated when you realize that Kavalafar can deal 400 damage bursts like that. Um, that's disgusting, and it's splash damage, too. So he's actually hitting a number of people, uh, making it really difficult 
for salt potatoes to even react. This game is teetering on the edge of Snowball. You know, it could really get out of hand in like the next four or five minutes if SK finds maybe two more plays like the last one, which given the, the map being opened up by taking the first turret, they're not in a bad position to do. Now, for you guys who maybe haven't seen Weapon Power Grace so much, mm. um, it, it's big to notice that, you know, this is all happening with just Tension Bow Sorrow Blade. You know, Tension Bow Wait, with absolutely... Tension Bow just... <laughs> he only just finished the Sorrow Blade. <laughs> yeah. You know, Tension Bow does so much work on this hero. Uh, really, really effective. He's actually got <laughs> fusion in his inventory, too. Yeah. Imagine if he popped it prior to going on the Joker. Could have been crazy. Be Too crazy. This is a, a, a for SK. They just transition Kavalafar into a bit more of a supportive role once Tyros is uh, at the position where he can hard carry. In fact, yesterday he picked up an Echo on his weapon power lane. Grace trust it to Kavalafar to to take a a melee captain hero and and play it in the lane to such success. Basically, Grace the new Lance. It seems here. SK tried to pioneer the weapon power Grace very early on into a release on Tyros. Took them a little while to figure out that it was Kavalafar who needed to play it. Salty Potatoes pushing SK off the turret. SK do fall back. They uh, don't quite have the best of kite, SK. So very important that they're the ones making the aggressive moves with this fortress, with this grace and all that damage onto Sneaky. Fountains pop. Sneaky's in trouble. Old Class will put himself in front of the Malice Inverted to keep his carry alive. But the turret, it will not remain alive. Kavalafar will heal himself up and SK just walk away with yet another objective. Watching this makes me sick, Dalsy. This is ridiculous damage coming out of Kavalafar. He is half health and sneaky. It's a point and tap ability. You know, it's it's not something you can avoid. It's not a skill shot. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just I tap on you and you die, which is gnarly. And you know, Tyrus for him, Malice and Verdict might as well be point and tap. He lands ninety percent of them. So basically, you're guaranteeing that right off the bat, someone on the side of S uh, of the side of Salty Potatoes is going to be going down. Which uh, forces a very early fountain uh, from the side of class. You know, fountain when it has to be popped like this due to burst loses a lot of its efficacy because ideally you want to use it when your whole team is low. But because Kavalafar is just diving in and dealing mostly damage to one target in a lot of these situations, because his auto do need to split up and avoid being splashed on, they're only finding the heal onto one person. Their their fountain is doing a lot less than the fountain of SK Gaming. They do have a broken myth now on Joker. That is a good pickup. He is not the main target in a lot of these fights. It's typically been Kestrel or uh, Lyra. So maybe he can turn things around. We've got to keep our eye on Joker in this next fight. Class down. Solo already and sneaky. He's just tanking up Samuel's damage. That is so much from Samuel Tyros. Cannot allow this man to do what he just did there. Five broken myth stacks. He's going to look to try and take this turret with the rest of his guys. Joker doing his best to clear the way, but the minion candy makes it hard to do so. 11 minute choke point turret. SK. It's no wonder North American team said these are the guys to watch out for at the last Unified Western Live Championships. SK are going to certainly be trying to turn heads once more as we uh, move on to the summon ones in just a month's time. All right, so it's only 12 minutes into the game. Kraken is still three minutes away, and there's already three turrets taken by SK. This is when the metal of the team is really tested, because they need to figure out how to continue accruing advantages. Otherwise, you know, Joker and Sneaky can't outscale them. But where do you go, right? It's pretty difficult to push under two turrets. It's also pretty challenging to uh, necessarily fight under the sentry and around the amount of walls that are by the sentry, because Joker can get over them very easily. Lyra Arcane Passage can really make the fight messy. and. It can be challenging to find the openings that you're looking for, although Salty Potato's got to be careful here. Yeah, cast a little bit caught out, down to half HP. Warchurts was popped by Raph to try and get them in, but, uh, you know, this is what they're doing. They're just minion cannoning these waves continuously, AJ. We haven't seen, I don't think, much priority on minion candy as a whole here in Europe whatsoever, but SK certainly have figured out exactly how they can use it. They can use it to force macro rotations. Every single time they can force basically the map rotation from a team that's behind by making the wave push in towards the base. It opens up the map. Either it's a turret that they can take easier because the minion candy makes the minions tankier as class just gets deleted once more. Holy crap. And now Joker chasing goes down. That is just misposition from Solid Potatoes. It's either 
minions that are super tanky and can't be cleared well, or it's minions that you uh, are forced to, to clear quickly or they get to your turret and just continuous uh, buffing from Raph. Oh man, all right. So next game, I think we got to start talking about the oh, draft. <laughs> uh, you know, I would definitely not let the grace through. You never know if it's going to be on. Uh, oh, never mind. Maybe I was I was trying to make a joke, but Saltos don't like that. They want to take down Kavalifar. That was just a bit of BM for SK, I think, to, to chase <laughs> basically to the edge of the uh, the healing platform. Yeah, it is a little bit far. A little bit risky. They're going to have to back up here. Only around a minute till the Kraken, though. I cannot see them not just capitalizing on that straight away. Trying to pick it up, force salt potatoes into a do or die territory. <sighs> I love it. You may not be able to see it, but Raph has just candied the wave once more. Uh, and look at where the wave is currently positioned. Uh, it's it's positioned right down. Like so he's, he's he's candying the next wave, which means that salty potatoes have to force it. He's just continuously having four in his inventory, and it forces salty potatoes to move towards that that back port of the map, it keeps them locked up, and SK allows them to, to buy themselves vision and, and really just try and take over the areas of the map that they want to play in. Yeah, I love using the minion candy as basically, you know, a, a carrot for the enemy team, like, oh, go deal with this minion wave. Meanwhile, I'm going to get scout traps down on your back camps because you're, you're busy up in the lane. That kind of stuff really can be the difference between winning or losing a game, actually, because uh, vision is so critical. SK, they're going to very efficiently pick up this last gold mine here. Kraken is about to spawn. Again, I don't see Salty Potatoes being able to win a fight over it right now. Really going to be reliant on, I think, Joker. He's, he's the key person for me. Going to have to have great positioning. Going to have to hit SK from the flank. If you can force SK to split focus, or if you can force them to split position even, could be in a good spot. Our salty potatoes are so pushed up here. SK are just going to initiate immediately. Look at Sneaky's health bar. It's melting. Gets the fountain as cast. Just body blocks the Malice and Verdicts. Raph will go very low, but it's not low enough. Joker, he cannot escape Kavalafar and Tyrus finds the kill. Raph just kill. running, but only to his death. SK Ace. find the kills and Ace at 15 minutes. Who cares about the Kraken? They've got minion candies and they've got a buffed up wave about to hit the turrets. They're going to finish this one right here. Right now, SK, such dominance in a 10-0 game, a completely flawless, uh, you know, round from them here. And in game two, Salty Potatoes are really going to have to figure out how to take down this early aggression from SK. This week, SK have looked like the old team secret in Europe. You know, they, they've they had that kind of dominant performance up until now. Maybe Salty Potatoes can change my perspective in next game, but I'm starting to see SK as a team that's looking to build a legacy again. We'll have to see if that legacy can be built, if they can lock themselves into first spot up there with Fnatic. Either way, game two on the cards in just a bit. Let's see what the analysts have to make of SK's It's not something that we see make it through the draft Ooh. that often. Scarf looks the pick though, which means it's likely sneaky on that black fella. Sky instantly locked in from SK. Yeah, Sky mm. Baron is has been so well into these you know compositions that have to go aggressive. You, the Catherine and Blackfeather can dive in, but then they can immediately reposition themselves further back and prevent the Scarf from being able to be involved in the fight because his allies are going to get too far ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And it's SK Gaming. Nikki on his signature hero of Blackfeather. Always a treat to see him bring it to the Halcyon forward. But against the Baron Sky and Arden, it's a tough composition to face into SK once more with a fabulous draft. Yeah, I really like the draft coming out of SK here, Dalsy. I feel like they have so much raw power packed onto their team. They're going to have good odds just based on that. I think the Arden is great glue. You know, yeah, that's one thing SK does really nicely. Their captain picks are always great at facilitating what the carries need and want to accomplish. Uh, I feel like they're they're one of the teams who picks their captains the best. On the other side, though, I mean, some of those very linearly are going to be you know, stronger and stronger every minute of the game. So if they can get late enough, I, I do think they're in a good position. I do think Scarf um, can be pretty effective. Kavalafar, he's playing the lane Baron, not unlike an, a North American Baron laner. You know, he's he's playing pretty loose with his jump jets already. I like it. I like it, Kavalafar. That's what I want to see. Yeah, it's always great to see when... Uh... When people play the Baron very aggressively, understanding those jump jets can just provide so much damage output. And you have them up so often if you're 
uh, continuously using your auto attacks to, to reset the cooldown and reduce it. Nikki here, kind of known for his uh, his Black Feather, but especially um, his Black Feather is unique. He prioritizes a lot of defensive stats over offensive stats, often finishing uh, both defensive items uh, before he uh, finishes his third offensive. So really just likes to prioritize being able to uh, take a lot of damage and really be that front line for his team. And actually that can work out really well, especially if Joker's untouched on the back line uh, and is able to kind of just play from range. That's that's something that Salty Potatoes need in a, uh, in a Black Feather. I'm pretty interested to see how the jungle pans out this game, Dalsy, because I think uh, on paper, both of these captains are good enough at just interrupting uh, fights that neither team really wants to be the initiator and both are probably going to play pretty safely focus mostly on farming uh trying to hit a mid-game spike earlier than their opponents rather than disrupting uh the progression of their opponents because i think that's the the safer plan at the very least like if you try and engage onto sky and arden it, you know even if you're you're moving in with the speed boost from merciless pursuit there's a good chance that with the vanguard and a forward barrage you're going to take a lot of damage and not even land your stun by the same token, if you try and initiate with Surrey Strike and in Vanguard to dive onto the back line of the, the jungle duo of Salt Potatoes, you're just going to get stunned up and then turned and burned on by a Scarf Goop. So neither team has the engage they need, uh, but both teams have the disengage and kite that they need, and therefore I don't think they fight. Uh, if they do fight, it's going to be messy, and it's going to be around an objective like this. Um, woo, pretty easily picked up by Choker because Tyrus burned all of his abilities. Kind of early. Doesn't have burst either. Let's face check the bush though. Class moves in with a merciless pursuit. Tyra is in a position where he can kind of just dance around, but Raph doesn't provide as much offensive statistics in this fight, which is an issue. And good positioning from Joker means that that forward barrage won't find any effectivity. Joker wanting to find a Spitfire group combination. That's going to be a stun though onto Raph. They're looking for first blood, but it goes the way of Tyra's. Looking for a second as well. This guy is crazy good. And obviously wanting to maintain one of his positions as the best junglers in EU. I mean, that was pretty messy as I expected it to be. But what I didn't expect was that the focus would be onto Raph. Sure, he's low. Maybe you get a kill, but you've got to know that Tyrus is going to turn on you and find return kills, especially because in the early game, Ford Barrage ticks of damage do not reflect off of Stormguard until you have actually a lot of crystal power. So you're, you're kind of... That ability almost doesn't do anything in, in that exchange, which basically means you're at a big deficit. Um, yeah, I can't say that Salt Potatoes made a decision I, I agree with there, but well capitalized on... Uh, by SK. They did play very uh, in and out of the edge of the fight, trying to keep Salt Potato interested, make them think they have some kind of advantage, uh, which they certainly did not have. Off the back of that, Tyrus got both kills, so he has already picked up Frostburn and has more crystal bits on top. It's very scary going up against a sky with lots of early crystal power. Yeah, it, it really is. He's already got the Frostburn before five minutes and the damage he now output is pretty insane. Death from above won't quite find classed here. He's gonna be able to walk away. Joker though, in a bit of trouble. And look at that slow, look at the forward barrage. Joker just trying to walk around it. They're splitting their focus a little bit here, SK. Looking for a single kill, not going to find anything. Fast has not finished his fountain either. So Raph was uh, very happy to just escort Tyrus wherever he wanted to with that kill. And it wasn't really anything that uh, Salty Potatoes could do about it. This is scary because it reminds me a lot of the game we saw with Scarf earlier where things got out of control kind of quickly and he was a non-factor. Um, if we continue to see heavy pressure from SK, that could happen again. Uh, no doubt about it. Although, you know, Catherine might be able to help defend. We'll have to see. Tyrus, I really like the discipline he's showing. He, he's such a measured player, you know? He could have dived with Surrey Strike onto Joker in the previous fight, but A, it would have been near the Crystal Sentry and that would have been risky, and B, Sneaky had just recalled and therefore could have been on his way. Oh nice, Sneaky actually gets the tree in there. But yeah, it, it was a smart decision, I think, to split focus and just force both Clast and Joker back, rather than maybe getting a kill, but maybe trade. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is a tough road for Salty Potatoes. I, I think it was probably clear that they were going to be playing from a deficit in this game. And something that, you know, I think I've been a little bit scared about for Salty Potatoes is 
can they play well enough from a de deficit here? Look at SK just putting the pressure onto the Joker. That Iron Cannon, ooh, it's gonna take down Sneaky. I was looking Damn. at Joker. Sneaky, I think, was expecting it to come down on Joker's head as well, and he just got taken on down. SK putting the damage down onto this turret and making it count here, AJ. Continuously, continuously pushing their adva advantages. Yeah, they got pretty decent turret pushing as well. Clast kind of needs to go and stun Kavalifar or something to get him out of this one uh, as safely as possible, although SK is going to play it safe too and actually back away here. I think that, yes, you know, your point is well made about the fact that we're expecting Salty Potatoes to play from a deficit here, and it's also well made that, you know, you, you wonder how they're going to do from that position. If you look at the third place matches, they had two flawless games and one game where they almost, you know, had a flawless game against them. We've not seen them necessarily play very well from a deficit. So picking a composition that you know is not going to excel early and, and put pressure on your opponents is a statement from Salty Potatoes to say, you know, we have confidence in ourselves to make this work. But it's also risky because, well, I mean, a lot of people doesn't necessarily even uh, think that you know, may maybe they have the capability of playing from the, the deficit there very effectively. This is uh, also just the Joker falling further and further behind as this game goes on. He's only just finished his Frostburn, had to prioritize some defensive stats here. Try and deal with the harass that Tyrus is outputting. This is a huge minion candied wave. That's a gauntlet being issued. Class going to be stuck in the middle of it. Pops the fountain, runs around, but he can't escape. And that's another kill going over to oh, Kabalapa. Raph is burning, but he's safe. He has the fountain still, AJ. Just really just playing and waiting for his life spring to kick on in so he can heal up. SK going to take this turret here. Sneaky may want to try and find an execute. Jumping on to Kavalafar, it's not a bad shout either. Can he get the kills? The question, one more on point, may just get it. Oh, the founder comes out, the on point misses, but he gets the execute nonetheless. And he's going to be able to save the turret through that one for one trade. That's a pretty decent deal. You know, you, you trade one for one and you save your turret. I think he's probably pretty fine with that. Plus, he got the gold from uh, shooting down Kavalafar a little bit, stopped him from farming up, slowed him down. I like it, you know, I, I like that play. I think it was effective, but ultimately it's a very small bandage on a massive wound because right now, uh, you know, SK are definitely uh, doing a lot of damage to Soft Potatoes. Soft Potatoes really need Joker to hit a second item, and he is so far away from that, even with the 1,000 in the bank, like, unless he goes for an E, which is a bit cheaper, um, which I don't think would be the best call. I think he needs Broken this. Yeah, I think you're right. He's going to go down towards the Eve just for Fusion. sustain. Ooh. Sneaky taking so much damage here. He has the code of plates, but it's just not enough at this point. Kavalafar has the tension bow and is looking for a tornado trigger. Through the shield, they take that turret down. Big minion wave will be uh, eaten up here by Joke, who's just trying his best to catch up on some gold. Five to one, a 2,000 gold lead. Could become three if SK decide to commit to this gold miner. Dragging it out, which means that Salty Potatoes know that it's, uh, it has been initiated, but it could also just be a bait. Death from above gonna split. Salty Potatoes try and find the kill. Kavalafar just dives forward and <laughs> takes down the Joker. Sneaky, maybe able to get a return kill. No, Kavalafar oh. with a double and a triple. The ace for him. They're gonna get a gold miner for themselves and start doing some work to this tier two turret as well. Who wore it better, Kavalafar with the weapon infusion or Joker with the crystal one? I think Kavalafar wore it significantly <laughs> better. That was some hot stuff. Like, okay, so I was about to talk about the infusions, and I, I want to re-talk about it now after that fight. I think it, it's set up for what we saw. Joker bought an infusion, which signals two things to me. A, he thinks that he might want to fight soon. And B, he thinks that with an infusion, he can't. Right? Both of those assertions are, are bad news, because you do not want to fight soon. Definitely not. The turret was already basically dead. There's no Kraken on the map. There's no reason to fight soon. And B, getting an infusion on just a Frostburn is not really going to do much for you, right? Whereas Kavalafar's infusion, as I said, he, he wore it a lot better. So I feel like there is there is some kind of disconnect, and you can see it from the purchase, in where Salt Potatoes thinks they are and where they actually are. You know, they think they can fight with just a little extra oomph, but they can't. They definitely can't. And, you know, giving away that ace... Really bad news. SK 
they're feeling really good off the back of that one. It's starting to get pretty scary. Kavalafar audaciously jumping on top of Sneaky and Joker, not really worrying about it. Thought Potatoes needs, uh, needs a bit of a miracle here, I think. Yeah, no, it's Kavalafar dives forward. Look at the damage onto all three members because it splashes. Not wanting to be grouped up, stacked up. Joker's in trouble. Class gonna lose his life. A kill over to Tyra's. SK have comfortably, comfortably, AJ, 2 0 every opponent this week. And if Gauntlet from Raph may not find a stun onto Sneaky or Joker, but Kavalafire is just feeling so confident. Jumps over the wall! I've only seen Druid make plays like this. Kavalafire wanting to just show that he has upped his game. Oh, man. Incredible stuff as that's another kill going over towards SK. The choke point turret, 12 minutes, it's being pressured. Classed loses his life. Ace. Another to Kavalafar. There's the ace, the minions in the base. Have they got the candy? No, they don't. But Kavalafar says, I don't care. I will push for the win. <laughs> and chunks down that turret. SK may be overstaying here. I say that though. Nah, it does look like uh, they will be able to walk away. <laughs> I think I think SK could have won that fight. Uh, wow, SK—they're moving from strength to strength, Dalsy. I mean, every game we've seen them play, they've looked more convincing than the last. I really think that this is them saying, "All right, you know, we're at the end of end of the season. Basically, we got to start thinking about the championship. We're probably going to make it, so let's make it in style. Let's really practice up, be the best team we can be ahead of time." And they're putting in the hours. You can tell. You know, they're. They're adapting things from other regions. They are uh, playing very strategically well. Their their draft is on point. Their mechanics look great. This is this is a team to watch, not just you know, heading into the final week perhaps uh, of the Vainglory Eight for summer, but also I think heading into the championship. You know. SK, when they switched out jetpacks for Raph, I think there was a lot of questions about it, but Raph has just stepped up for the team. SK just looked entirely renewed, classed, cannot escape. Joker with the Dragon's Breath, it may the do Dragon's some breath. damage. Can Sneaky find the kill to Kefalify? Yes, he can, okay! This is a star for Salty Potatoes. Another kill goes their way, but it's gonna be Tyra's cleaning up the 1v1, the Joker matchup, uh, the jungle matchup, and the Joker losing it to Tyra's. A triple kill for his Sky, an ace for him as well. Nothing much to get, but uh, yet another win for SK. Yeah, I mean, that fight was a little bit closer for Salty Potatoes. You gotta question the positioning uh, there uh, from the side of SK. They're fighting in a choke point into a Dragon's Breath, into a 14-minute Scarf. Like, that's it's gonna be scary no matter what. But they still make it happen. Tyrus in that 1v1 with Scarf, I mean, you could see the additional item pretty clearly uh, through the fight. There was not much hope Double for Scarf kill. there. SK, with half a minute until Kraken spawns, I'm sure have their eyes on that as well as the prize at the end here, the W. I don't see Salt Potatoes, again, coming back without kind of a miracle, but things like that can be as small, like miracle, miracles can be small. You know, they can be as simple as your opponent's fighting a choke point and ignoring Joker for too long after he picks up a third item. That would be a miracle. That would work, potentially, for Salt Potatoes. Is, uh, miracles is, is probably the, the most clear-cut way that Salty Potatoes get back into this game. And, and by miracle, it, it's SK mispositioning. It was Kvalifa mispositioning that allowed them to take the last fight. But that is just so reliant on an SK making mistakes, and now the Kraken has spawned. You have to think, whatever fun they've been having, AJ, and it certainly does look like they're having fun today, is uh, it's about to become a little bit more serious. Time to win this game. SK going to wisen up here. Solid Potato is pushing fourth here, but can they afford to do so? Kavalafar just laying down auto attack after auto attack. The Gauntlet won't quite catch them. Joker able to block it. Silence does go down. It's a double coming out of class. The Dragon's Breath burning through. Solid Potato is moving forward, but can they get anything else? Kavalafar safe on the back line. Has his jump jets ready to go. Class looking for a stun is able to oh, land it. Oh, the spit! Connects and Joker now looking to try and find Tyrus as well. A serious strike to reposition, dodges out, but Sneaky jumps forward and Tyrus will go down. It's a miracle on the Halcyon fold! An ace for the Sneaky of Salty Potatoes and they're gonna look for a Kraken. They've gotta start getting onto the carries. What is going on, Dalcy? I feel like SK are losing their minds a little bit here, or maybe I am. You know, they're, they're not focusing targets that actually matter. 
They're doing so much work on the class on the front line. They've got tools to get past him. We've seen before how much damage they do. If you Surrey strike onto the back line and jump jets and Vanguard, you're going to blow someone up so long as it's not classed. So stop focusing classed. Salty Potatoes should not be in this game right now, but they have a new lease on life. The Kraken is pushing in their favor. What can they accomplish here is the question. I think they're probably going to get like two turrets. It's pretty hard for SK to, to to deal with this push if they want to, you know, deal with the crack at the same time. Maybe they'll just go in and, and aggress on the salt potatoes. I wouldn't mind that play either. <laughs> the Joker takes so much damage from Kvalapar right now. Class tanking up, allowing for this broken myth to stack up. Class is just dead here. Simply put, uh, dead. Okay. Kraken will find the first turret, AJ. Can it find any more? Doesn't look likely. That's uh, a bit of gold going over to Salty Potatoes, but it's going to be even more going over back to SK, who uh, are pretty much done as far as weapon builds are concerned, but obviously need to uh, start getting some defensives for Tyra as a reflex block and all that. He's going to get it now. <sighs> he just finished for Sneaky. He's got a Shiver Seal as well. So two damage items on this... Uh, on this black feather i feel like he needs a breaking point at some point this game he's still that that shimmer still for a breaking point but perhaps sneaky can make it work i don't know man hmm i don't know i think joker is kind of the the main damage source by such a large margin that it might not even matter in a lot of these fights um that being said as more and more shield gets picked up by sk maybe that'll change for now though i think Sneaky's he's doing respectable damage um SK, they need to be a little more decisive. They need to be, you know, jumping onto the back line, killing carries. On the side of Salt Potatoes, though, I guess just keep doing what you're doing, like trying to fight in the jungle and choke points, positions you can kite back into. I like what SK is doing. They're forcing them into the lane by flanking and then pushing forward and threatening to just end the game. Good block. And that second silence doesn't Ooh. actually connect. The Blast Tremor was in range. SK have forced a rotation here, and the ultimates from class have been used already. Sneaky moving forward. That's going to be class stunning up. Raph here's the Dragon's Breath coming out, and Sneaky just trying to put the pressure onto Salty, onto SK. Kavalafa, a lot of damage, but Sneaky very low. Going to get the Fountain. They've taken down Kavalafa once more, and Sneaky's running Tyrus away with it. it. Raph dives forward with the blood for blood. Gets one. Tyrus finds another. It's only Joker left alive here. Nine broken myth stacks on this guy, and Joker... He doesn't have a broken myth, so he can't stack up. He is just running for his life, but he's in vision right now. They know exactly where he is. The Joker knows he's done for. Trying to find a kill onto Raph, but he cannot do so. Puts the group down, but it is the ace for SK once more. Holy, this game from SK. They are looking to finish it right now. Salty Potatoes put up a grand defense. One possibly better than I expected, but they're going to... With sneaky five seconds class. yeah okay it's only going to be one turret look at tyra's positioning yeah they're not okay. going to risk it i like that i don't think risking it makes sense you've you put up two o's all weekend let's keep doing it right that's what i want to see um i have to admit that last fight whilst close was definitely much better from sk they were focusing uh, better targets they were able to actually create more space between them and uh joker on the scarf tyrus was not the main focus, which was actually a really big deal, because if Kvalifar goes down early, but does a lot of burst up front, it's kind of an equitable trade, so long as Tyrus is going to be able to be effective over the course of the longer-term fight, which he definitely was uh, in that previous one. Right now, though, SK needs to be careful not to get baited into fighting into the jungle. big part of the reason why they were successful last time is they did force Salty Potatoes to move into their court up in the lane. Look at Sneaky with the flank. Yeah, looking for the flank. Here comes Joker as well with the Dragon's Breath straight into the gauntlet. And Sneaky looking for Tyra's as well. Kvalifar very safe. Sneaky has to escape. Class moves forward. He is just going to front line for Salty Potatoes, but SK not interested in that fight anymore. Echo and the Blast Tremors still available here for Class. The Kraken, she's respawned as well, AJ. 21 minutes. Salty Potatoes still putting up fight. Still possible for them to win team fights here and take another Kraken. Honestly, getting that ace earlier on bought them enough gold to be competitive in these fights. 
Uh, it's, it's been a huge deal. I love Joker's itemization since it's gone quite defensive. I think he needs to. It's making, I, I, or I think it's what's giving SK pause about jumping onto him on the back line. Sneaky, again, this is another reason why you can't fight in the jungle. What we saw there was him with the flank so that he only had to walk to the fight and then he could chase the fight with all of his gap closers rather than initiating the fight with the gap closer. There's a lot of things about fighting in the jungle that are just great for salty potatoes. I think SK needs to be very careful not to get lured in here. It's a bit of a honey trap when you see Joker split from Sneaky like this, but it's a bad idea to try and get in that. Yeah, Class looks for an engage, but can't quite find it. Class, he's gonna go oh. down! There's the Blast Tremor coming out, but Tyra's able to find the kill Joker in the midst of it all, and he will fall as well! It's only Sneaky left alive, and he's inside the gauntlet. It's a double, it's an ace, it's all over for Salty Potatoes. Another 2-0 for SK here, AJ, and they have just taken Europe by storm. Incredible performance from them all around, a team performance as well. So hard to pinpoint a single player, they're all just playing so well they really are there were some dicey moments this game for sure but they recovered from the mistakes i think pretty nicely salty potatoes also showed some some glimmers of genius you know they were forcing sk to think about fighting them in places that they didn't want to but ultimately sk just had too much of a lead i'm very excited to see where sk go in the next week and eventually once we get to the championship and incredible stuff for sk and they are looking like the hope that Europe needs. Salty Potatoes, a good run. Let us not forget, they came from the Challenger Series uh, from the last split. And they've just made it to a finals week. Incredible stuff here in Europe, but from AJ and myself, Dalsy, it's us done. Let's throw it back over to the desk to break down that series.